husband still in control of this? What's what's really happening? Why why does he have to let the churches to be closed? You know, and uh, many are accusing and they're saying, uh, can we pray about it? Can we? Is there something that we can do that the churches can be open so that we can go back to worshiping God and all that? But I want to tell you something about this uh, uh, whole church being closed thing. And what I feel uh, God trying to tell me in my heart, and I thought, why not just explain what I feel? And uh, probably it will edify us as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, so that we can be able to see, is there a reason why God allowed the churches to be closed? Okay, Because this one has happened, and people are really wondering, what, what's wrong? Now, have you realized since when the church is uh, uh, closed, there has been a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fear. People have been fearing, what's next? What's going to happen? What is really happening? H how will it be in the days ahead? But God tells us that we are not supposed to be fearful. Let's see what the Bible says in uh, 1 John 4.18. The Bible says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. If you really love God, you should not be fearful because if he told you he loves you, he knows and is in control. And I'm going to show you how God is controlling this situation so that you can be able to understand that uh, the Bible is clear when it says there is no fear in love. If you love God and he told you that you're his child, you have nothing to fear. Even if they close all the churches, there's nothing to fear. Perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment. When you fear, you will be tormented. You may go to hell because of fear. And I'm going to show you this in just a bit. And the Bible says, He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We loved him because he first loved us. Now, you may think and ask, Why would fear take me to hell? Let me show you somewhere where the Bible speaks about this. And it says that people will go to hell because of being fearful. Uh, Revelation 21.8, the Bible tells us this. But the fearful, you see, the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whomongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth its fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, why would God say the fearful will go to hell? Because when you fear, you conform to the things of the world. Look at what is happening to the world right now. The fearful are running and trying to find a help in uh, scientists and in uh, politicians and in different people and forgetting the God who called them. And people are saying, okay, you, you see, we should not do this and that because they said, and they are looking at you when you're getting, you want to get uh, to pray to God. And they're looking at you like this man here. And they're saying, Can, don't you fear? You see, scientists have told us this and that. Don't you fear? You see, fearfulness, it's evil. And uh, the church is being closed. It has opened something uh, which if you really watch very well, you will be able to understand God is totally in control of this. Now, have you realized since ever since the church has closed, pastors have started calling members. It was not possible for most pastors, especially in the big churches, to call members. They used to be like, you know, uh, you have to come to church and listen to me. And uh, they have no fellowship with uh, most of the churches. Actually, pastors have not had personal relationship with members. But right now, because uh, things have uh, turned, you know, sour, they are calling members. And they're telling them, hey, brother, how are you doing? Let me hear about you. Can we? Can I come home? Can we fellowship a bit together? You know, before, it never used to be like that. They used just to say, okay, it's Sunday. You just look for one verse that you will uh, preach to people. You just, and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying all of them are like that, but many right now, they have started calling members and having a fellowship together, talking together. And have you also realized that even the members now have started reading the Bible for themselves. The moment you realize that, oops, we are not, no longer going uh, to the church. The church is not being open. Now I have to read the Bible for myself. And many are starting to realize what God had put forth 
in their lives. They are starting to understand maybe something which I was told is not true. The Bible says something else. I believe that God wanted people to start reading the Bibles for themselves and not just sit down and wait for someone to read it for them. For them. Because God told us that is our refuge and the strength. And there's no way you can take your refuge in someone. The Bible t tells us here, it tells us here in uh, the book of Psalms, uh, Psalms uh, 46, 46 verse 1, God said this. He said that, uh, he said that, uh, uh, 46 verse 1, yes, to the chief musician for the sons of Korah. Okay, that's the introduction. God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble, okay? In all the time you are troubled, he is always there to help you. But people have not been knowing that. Now, when the churches were closed, people discovered now, it's not my pastor who is helping me. It's not a certain believer in church who is helping me. It is me and my God. It is me and my God, okay? And people are now starting to read the Bible. Are you seeing that? Another thing, do you realize that uh, the fake churches are starting to be exposed? People are no longer going to the fake churches anymore. When the churches have been closed, people have been uh, watching uh, online. They're checking online. Uh, you know, what uh, is happening. And maybe on Sundays, instead of going to church because churches are closed, they are watching someone's uh, online. And as you're perusing over and over on YouTube and other places, you discover, come on, my pastor was telling me something which is not in the Bible, while someone else is explaining what the Bible is saying, and people are opening up their eyes. I'm not saying all churches are like that, but the fake ones, the fake churches are starting to be exposed. Exposed, why? Because where God is, there is light. And people have been blinded by a false light. Many people have just been going to churches because, you know, it's Sunday and my pastor told me to go. And if I don't go, something will happen. Blah, blah. They, they say, okay, you know, uh, it's you're falling back. You're falling down because you're not going, to, not going to the church. But the Bible tells us he gives us light. When we read the Bible, he will show us the light. He will show us the light. See what the Bible says in the book of Psalms. Uh, the book of Psalms, sorry, the book of Psalms, uh, 27, 1, Jesus says that he is the light, our God is the light. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? This is David explaining what he knows about God. He says that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? The moment you start reading the Bible, you start seeing the light. And when you see the light, the fake churches and the fake people who have been oppressing you all your time, they are exposed. And even if the churches will be opened at some point, God willing, if it happens, if it doesn't happen still, no worries, God is in control, people will not go back to the fake churches that they have been going to. And uh, something that you'll need to understand, God is dismantling mediators. Do you know, especially in churches today, there are people who place themselves as if they are mediators between God and man. And the Bible tells us there is no mediator between God and man. The only mediator is the man, Jesus Christ. Have you seen there are people who... You cannot pray anything by yourself. You say, I have to rush to the pastor to pray for me. Pastor, tell me, what is God saying? Pastor, tell me this. Pastor, tell me that. It's like you have a mediator between you and God. Now, God is breaking that. He's breaking that. He's breaking this. And no longer will people be oppressed by thinking, ah, I have to go through so and so. It's only this person who can mediate between me and God. No! No, I think that's one of the reasons why God just closed the churches, the literal churches, so that he can show you something else. I do not need you to have a mediator. You are perfect. You can go straight to God because the veil was broken. Now, do you understand something else? That God is breaking, is building, sorry. God is building personal relationships with his people. 
Back in the days, people did not have a personal relationship. Only a few had. Many of the people relied on churches and what pastor says and the, the programs in the church and things like that to, to tell you how you should re relate with God. And others could only pray when they're in church. And others could only pray when, uh, you know, the pastor says, we have this and this time of prayer. We have this. People did not have a relationship with God. They used to say, okay, uh, I will do it when our pastor tells me. But now what is happening? God is building a relationship with his people. He's building a relationship with his people. All right? Because he tells us that we come to him every time in prayer. Let me show you. Philippians. Philippians um, 4.6. Philippians 4, 6, it tells us something here. How God wants us to come to him with prayer. Not to come to him whenever somebody tells us. He needs us to have a personal relationship. He says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. It's not someone else making a request to you to God. No, it is you making your request to God directly personal relationship and he says and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through christ jesus not through a man it is through your relationship with him so he wants you to have a personal relationship with him and i think the church is being closed we're starting to see more and more people getting a personal relationship with God. You can pray in your bedroom when you're cooking, when you're taking a shower. You can pray in your houses. You can pray with your wife, your husband, your children. You're having a personal relationship. And I think this was really important because people are relying so much on others, on churches, on pastors, on deacons and things like that to tell them when they need to get close to God. Now that has been broken and God is using this time for people to be able to come close to him. Even much more than they used to do. And have you realized also that uh, home fellowships are getting stronger? Fellowships are getting stronger. People are starting to pray together in their houses. Neighbors, friends, you know, family members. You sit down and you pray together. Are you seeing this one is happening nowadays? Because people are realizing, oh, the church is not just a building. It is basically me and you sitting up together. We are the church of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And when we get together, where two or three are gathered together in Christ's name, he is there. And he tells us he is there absolutely 100%. So people are starting to have fellowships together, sitting down together and talking about the word of God. And uh, right now I've also realized people are watching the end times more than before because uh you know people are watching the end times because uh they, they are seeing how things are like if churches are being closed and these things happen like this and uh, the world is turning uh, evil and uh, what is happening and the politicians are saying this and doctors are saying this people are watching and saying this must be the end times and people are checking the end times more and they are trying to get closer to god Back in the days when you know there is a, you know, there's nothing to worry, you know, I'm all set, everything is fine. You did not have anything to worry about the end times. You're saying, okay, I, I have some uh, places where I need to go and plant. I've just bought this and that. I've just gotten married. Just as it was in the times of Noah. But the wise understood, Noah and his family, they were wise. They understood these are the times that God is going to destroy. And they built an ark. They got into the ark. Are you getting into the ark or are you still lost out there? You don't know. Are you not discerning the times that we are in times of the end? People right now are starting to see this. And I believe that God closed the churches so that people can start studying the end times. Checking, oops, what is happening? What is going on? I need to understand. I need to see the Messiah is about to come. Something else. Have you realized the prosperity churches are being blanketed now by the gospel of grace churches? The prosperity churches, when you tell people about, you see you'll be rich, you see you will buy this and this, people are wondering, what are you telling me if you see your prosperity kind of gospel? How will this gospel of prosperity help me when even my car, I can't move it 
from my house because we have lockdowns, we have this and that. So you're telling me God will give me a car which I cannot drive because all the roads are locked and everything is... Come on, people are running away from this joy lost in kind of preachings. People are going away from this. And people are starting to believe in the true gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel of greed and prosperity. This, this one, people are going away from it. Which people have always been talking about money, 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 I'll give you this, I'll give you this, you'll get good health, you'll get... And now it's dismantling this kind of gospel. God has just looked and he said, don't you understand that we are saved not to have money, but to have eternal life? Something else, there's a lot of fear nowadays. And this fear is making many people to get saved. Many people are getting saved because of the fear. They are fearing the times ahead. They don't know what is going to happen. And now people are starting to realize, oops, where is God? I need to find God because things are really tough. And the way it's going, I don't know if we will survive. They have a lot of fear. And this fear is making people come back to their senses. And they start believing in God. And start knowing that the only place where I should not be having fear... Is in God because God has told us we should not fear when we are in him. But if you're out in the world, you should be fearful because, <laughs> man, you're going to hell. If you're not, you're not saved, you should be fearful, my friends. But if you're in Christ, God told us something here. That when we're in him, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing, absolutely nothing to worry about. In Revelation 117, it says, and when he saw him, he fell at, uh, at his feet as dead, and, laid, uh, and he laid his hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, this is what I wanted to show you, fear not, for I am the first and the last. Jesus tells us, come on guys, don't fear. He is the first and the last. So, this fear is very important when you're not a, a born again believer. The Holy Spirit is trying to tell you, come on, come on, you're going to hell. Fear. But when you get into the limelight of Christ, there's nothing to worry. And that's why I think and I believe God brought this intentionally so that people can wake up from where they're sleeping. Because people are just relaxed and they didn't know that the hell is coming and they didn't know about, uh, you know, things can change. But right now when you see you've lost your house, you've lost your car, you've lost this, you've lost that, and you're on lockdowns and you're worried what is going to happen. Now that time you start opening your eyes. You see how God changes things? You see how God changes things? People are now starting to understand that it is Jesus who saves. It is not a church. A church is you and me. We are in the body of Christ. A church is not a building. You know, most people have been thinking, I'm, I'm saved by our church. I've always had so many people tell me, ask me, Keith, which church do you attend? Which church? Which church? People are so much concerned about which church, which building. I'm in the building of Christ. I am in the house, I am a body, a body part of the body of Christ. It is Jesus who saves us. It is not a church. So for those who are rushing and they're saying, oh, oh, come on, our churches have been closed. No, they have not been closed. They have not been closed. Jesus saves not a church. Now people are starting to understand this. And I believe that God closed these buildings so that now people can open up their eyes to the true Savior. Who is Jesus Christ? Not a building. Are you understanding this? So, if you're out there and you're still confused and you're saying, now my church has been closed, blah, 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 how am I going to be saved? No. Jesus says, he died for your sins so that you can be saved. He did not open a church so that a church can save you. Jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures. And the only way you can be saved is believing the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about how Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you understand how he died and why he died, he did not die for nothing. He died to set you free, to save you. His blood was shed for you at the cross. When you understand that, you will be saved. And that's the only way you can stop fearing all this. And you're saying, oh, our church has been closed. I don't know what's going to happen. God did this so that he can stop all these things.
things which have been happening. People believing and looking upon a building instead of looking upon Christ. And I believe he was breaking all these mediators and breaking all these traditions of men and exposing the lies so that people can wake up to the truth. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like this video, you can uh, give it a thumbs up. You can also share the video so that other people can understand. And those who are lost can be able to understand the truth. And they can know the truth so that the truth can set them free. You can also subscribe. I always post new videos every day, two or three videos. So hope they will be a blessing to you as the time goes by. God bless you and have a blessed time.